Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome back to this next episode. And to recap, we started off in the very first part of this series of basic training. And what we did was we created, well, you know, the first video, just cover the basics of understanding the anatomy of Unreal Engine 4, what the different parts of the windows are, and, and so forth. And then we moved into BSP Geometries on part two, which was creating BSP geometries and converting them to static meshes. And then we did static meshes and converting them to other static meshes to make um, these really horrible looking uh, modular buildings that I have here. And then we went into converting it into a first person shooter and we even created some bots. So if I hit play, we actually are in a first person shooter. We don't have any legs, so we're just a pair of arms and a gun, but we can shoot. We also added a particle effect, so when our bullet hits, we get a little effect there. We have the bot system that we can actually kill them. They fall over, do a death animation, and they die. At the end of the video, we put a gun in their hands. It still doesn't work yet. And that's good. We can kill our bots and run around our town and, and do that, but um, if we get too close to them. Holy crap, they, they see us. They will chase us, they'll come over to us, but they won't attack us yet. But we just want to go ahead and add in a sniper mode. I want to hit that right mouse button, and I want to, I want a sniper mode. I can't get a good sight picture on them. So that's what we're going to do in this video, is we're going to make sniper mode. We've got our FP weapon, we've got all our stuff, everything is lovely. Um, we're going to minimize all these extra folders except for the character folder, which is where we're going to be working in right now. Character folder, blueprints, player underscore base. And yeah, we can go ahead and all that spaghetti right there is just for shooting. Yikes. So let's do that. Shooting. Put it in a comment. A lot of things in there that we could probably condense down, and why didn't you include that? You were such a pain in my ass. Now will you move? Thank you. So I'm just moving this around. Holy shit. Why are you... Get back where you're supposed to be. We're just going to drag this up here out of the way because we don't need it right now. One thing we are going to do is something we mentioned earlier in one of the other videos. We're going to go ahead and give that a color. It's red. It's damaged stuff. That one, I don't care about. Movement. Movement is green for go. So we're going to give that same thing. It's movement input. Okay, and we can do this. Click here, the color, click OK. So, this jump box always gives me a royal pain in my ass. There. You don't need to move anywhere. But let's move you to right here and see you move this box, and this one doesn't want to move. Thanks, Epic, for not scaling your frickin' comment boxes correctly. So, so, all I'm doing is just neatening up things. And that's it. Okay, so let's go ahead and investigate what we need to do here for a snipper, snipper mode. This is begin play. And the color we want for you well, you're not damaged, you're not, um, well, you'll be yellow, because yellow is going to be for um, event stuff, or from, like, begin play, event ticks, things of that nature. So we can start to separate things from our blueprints to organize them. When you scroll out, you see all that red, you know it's a damage thing. And if you see green, it's go, and it's just a way of getting organized. Alright, shut up and get into the damn work. 
All right, so we look at our viewport, and hmm, we've only got the one camera. We've got a set of arms, and we have a really big gun. So, how are we going to create a sniper mode? Well, it's a lot easier than you think. Um, and honestly, if I use this camera right here, if we try to zoom in, it's going to still probably see our weapon. So, I think what I'm going to do is keep it simple, stupid. I'm just going to add another camera. And this is our first person camera here. So, I'm going to click and where is it it's just linked to our mesh here and mesh here now we have another mesh there's nothing here later on and this is default whenever you bring in the uh, first person template is you have this existing mesh here what you can do is actually tack on a um an actual uh, regular third person skeletal mesh so you'll have both and you'll be able to switch between the two as needed and yeah we're not going to get into that just yet but what I want is a sniper camera and this is actually rooted rooted here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually have this selected I'm going to add a component and we're going to call we're going to get a camera we're going to call this our sniper camera we have it selected and we're gonna go ahead and move it forward to here so it's gonna be in front of our gun so we shouldn't see our gun at all and next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here scroll down the events panel and turn off auto activate we're gonna hit compost and save and let's go into our event graph so here's what we're gonna do we're going to create a right click event so we want right mouse button and there we go so when we click the right mouse button what we want to do is we want to use that camera okay so I'm going to first off get a reference to my first person camera just drag that in here and I'm gonna grab my sniper camera and drag it in here as well so I've got references to both cameras so what I do when I press my button well I'm gonna do this on a flip flop so if well we'll start off without the flip flop to show you what happens is whenever I press it I want the camera to activate when I release it I want it to go back so we'll do it this way so it's a momentary and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to do it as a toggle where you right click once and it goes into sniper mode you right click again it comes out of it so the first thing we want to do is grab from our first person camera and we want to deactivate and then once we deactivate that camera we want to activate our sniper camera so that's going to give us this and this and we're going to do something else to it. We're going to add um, a scope crosshair in just a minute too. So now when we press this is what we're going to do we're going to deactivate a camera and activate another one. And I can grab both of those, Control C and Control V, and just drag those up here. So now when I release, I do this. And we're going to have to do a couple other things here too, but we want to deactivate our sniper camera and we want to activate our first person camera. So in theory, this is going to switch our cameras right now, but we're probably going to have to do a few things here. So we're normal, and then I right click and hold we're in our zoom our, our scope cam let go and it goes back to our normal camera and it should stay focused on our crosshair but I can't look up and down when I let go I can look up and down and all around so how do we fix that first off if we look at our first person camera and we scroll down it's using pawn control location or pawn control rotation can't see what that says so I'll screw, move this out here use pawn control rotation so we want to do the same thing is we want to use pawn control rotation on our sniper camera so I'm gonna select that and use pawn control rotation okay let's compile and save and let's go back in here and try it again so now 
we hit it, we're on the other camera. And hey, works perfectly fine. But we don't we don't have any zoom. We're not zooming in. We want to zoom with our sniper camera. We'll do that in just a moment. First thing I want to do is I want to break this and I want to break this. And off of pressed, I want to add a flip flop. Flip flop is a toggle switch. We press it the first time, we're going to go into sniper mode. We press right mouse button again, we're going to come out of sniper mode. So you'll see what the difference is here now. Is we go over here and now we right click, we're in our mode. Right click again, we come out of that mode. So that's awesome. But let's get some zoom going here. How do we get some zoom? Well, gonna move this down a little bit because I want to get access to another node here and I'm going to grab reference to my sniper camera and I'm just going to tuck this in here and drag off from here and we want to set field of view now the default of your field of view is 90 just so you know and we're going to grab this and we're going to set this to 10 and see what that looks like. So let's compile and save and see if we have a problem with anything. Right click. Oh yes, we got a heck of a good sniper mode. Right click again and it comes back out. Right click. And we can actually move while we're in our mode here. That's good. I like that. Well, we got that cross here. Um, where is that crosshair coming from? I want to get rid of that crosshair. Never actually tried it, but where is that getting that crosshair from? Um, you know, I've never actually looked whenever we do that. Um, because I, I very seldom do I use the first person mode. So I need to find where it's saying do that and it's probably going to be in the first person game mode so we look in here on a first person um, probably not as the textures yep there's a crosshair but let's look in here in our blueprints first person HUD aha draw texture event receive draw texture is there anything else in here nope that's it and you are draw across here in center of screen. Totally not how I would have done it. And hmm. So you're just doing this and you're setting up that cross here. Is it totally not the way I would have done it? Um delete your comment box and grab you guys and you and whatever. You got make linear color. You got all kind of fancy junk in there just to do a crosshair. Well, and it's referring to its draw texture and it's saying this is the the screen, the color, it's doing all this fancy stuff. Um you know I'm not going to do it this way. I'm going to do it my way. I'm actually going to delete theirs. Boom. Gone. Compile and save. And there, there's nothing in the player HUD anymore. We might can come back in there and use that player HUD and use it for our health bar, things like that. But I'm going to do something here. I'm going to create a custom event called Crosshair On. And I'm also going to create a variable called crosshair question mark. Now, what I want to do here is on this, and really want to be, you know, whatever's, let's do another custom event just because they're cool. And crosshair off. And in our crosshair off custom event, all we're going to do is set crosshair 
to unchecked. So we're going to say no. Crosshair, no. Um, crosshair on, then we want to set crosshair to checked. But we're going to draw our own crosshair setup. And we'll get to that here in just a second. So now we want to run crosshair off. We want to turn off that little small crosshair that they're drawing. And I'm sorry. Yeah, we want to turn off that crosshair. And no, we don't. We want that to actually be. Yeah, we want that off, and then we're going to draw our widget. So crosshair off. You know what? Overcomplicating things. We don't need that. Um, we're going to use this system right here for running our custom event from. But what we want to do here is we want to set crosshair off here. And we want to do another variable because we want to scope mask. We want to have that scope view thing to make it look like we're actually looking down the scope. Scope question mark. And then we'll do this custom event here of custom. Now we don't even need to do that. We can actually do it all in the. Nope, we do need another one just for that because. We're going to run two different events here. This is just going to turn on the regular crosshair that we're used to. And this is going to be scope on. And from the scope on custom event, we want to set that to true. We're going to do more with it. Just settle down. Settle down. It'll be all right. So this is our two crosshair system, regular crosshair and a scope. So the next thing we need to do here is we need to go back to our, um, we don't have a UI folder yet, but let's go to our assets folder. And in here, we're going to create a new folder called textures. I'm going to go into there and I'm going to get um, their texture of the crosshair. We're going to use their crosshair. It's lovely. It's 16 by 16. It'll work. And I'm just going to copy it to there. So now we're in our folder. Um, we're going to say F2. Let's actually be right. T underscore for texture. Crosshair. The next one we want is one that is available on my Discord channel in the BBG Demos page. It is a scope mask. And I'm going to grab it from my hard drive and actually put it in there. You can't see what it looks like now, but I'm going to go ahead and rename that to T underscore scope underscore mask. And we'll get to it in just a moment here. So we're going to save all. It's actually a 1920 by 1080 image, where this one's just a little 16 by 16 image. So in our assets folder, let's go ahead and create another one, another folder called widgets. And we're going to go ahead and user interface, widget blueprint. And we're going to do this um, W for widget underscore crosshair. And we're going to go ahead and do the crosshair one now. I'm going to grab an image, drag it in here. I'm going to go back to my textures, grab that texture right there, come back in here, and then select my brush and it there. And there's the thing. It's 16 by 16. So I need to set the size here to 16, tab 16. So it's the same size. Now I want to anchor it to the center of the screen. See, it didn't automatically move or anything because we need to set the position. For it to be centered in the screen, we need it to then be centered. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do negative 8, tab negative 8, because it's 16, so half of 16 is 8. 
That's going to put a dead square in the center of our screen for our image. Compile and save. And then we're going to do something here. We're going to get rid of the pre-construct and everything else. We're just going to use the event tick. And from here, we're going to cast to player underscore base. And we're going to get player character reference. And we're going to need this in the other one as well, so I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Just with Control C. And what we want to do here is we're in the crosshair one. We want to get crosshair because we're going to ask a question. So there's our branch node. We're asking a question. What question are we asking? Are we using, do we want to use the crosshair? If the answer is true, then whatever, we're already doing it. If it's false, we want to remove this widget from parent. So remove from parent and it automatically knows target is widget. So there we go. And in fact, we can actually copy all of that. Compile, save, close that widget. Go back in here and into our widget folder. We want to right click, user interface, widget blueprint. This one's going to be w underscore scope. We're going to open that and then go back here, go to our textures, select our scope mask, go back here again, create an image, select our brush, hit the arrow, and now it's there. But what we want to do with this one is anchor it to the full screen, and then we'll come over here, and these are all offsets, so 0, 0, 0, and 0. That gives us our entire screen is filled up with this big black mask, and all we have is a set of crosshairs. So compile and save, go to our graph, you can delete everything out of here, control V, and we need to go ahead and event tick, connect that, and we are almost done. All we need to do is get rid of the crosshair reference, and instead we want scope. We want to get a reference to the scope and plug that into our branch so it's going to do the same thing. So compile and save. Now we're back in our character. What we want to do when we turn crosshair on, we want to create a widget. And I'm going to copy and paste this too, so I'm not going to put that widget in here yet. So we want to get player controller because we need our controller reference. From our return value, we want to add add to viewport. And that's it. So I'm going to grab these three, control C to copy it, and then this one is going to be for that that's for the crosshairs, so we want the crosshair widget. So this one, we paste that in there, connect it, line it up. And this one we want to be our scope. So now we're creating our widgets based on our custom events we created. Easy enough. Let's compost and save. And now, whenever we are going into our scope mode, we're wanting to turn off our little camera, our little crosshair, and we want to use scope on custom event that we created earlier. Okay, and now when we go back to our regular mode, we want to, and since this is okay, we don't need to worry about changing our camera back, we need to scope, we need to set scope to off, so we don't want to use it anymore, and we want to use our original crosshair, so we're going to drag off from here and say crosshair on and run that custom event. Okay. If you're confused, let me know. So let's see if it works. Okay, we don't have our crosshair right now because we haven't actually activated it. We go into our scope mode. It didn't create our widget. Um, because... Because why? 
Um, use scope. Oh, set scope to true. And here's the thing is we need to tell it to use our crosshair from begin play. So let's actually come in here on begin play and put in crosshair on. So now when we begin to play it'll actually turn on our crosshair from the get-go. So there we got our crosshair. We right click to zoom in. There, it looks skewed because of the viewport but right click and we come out of it and we got our regular crosshair again but we don't have the little red crosshair when we're zoomed out so to get kind of a good aspect ratio here I'm going to select play and new editor window pi we're going to get some new pi so this is going to give us a, a correct aspect ratio of our scope so right click and we can zoom in right click we can zoom out and we're a snipper That's just that easy. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Oh, you see me? You're gonna come get some? Uh, no, I don't think so. What do you think? You gonna get some? No, you're gonna get some bullets in the head. Okay, you see, we're not hitting him. He's out of our range. We can't hit him. He's too far away. Damn that! We're a sniper. We can hit from a mile away. So. This is all scope related stuff. It is working lovely. So let's go ahead and hit C to comment box that. And scope and crosshair. And let's go ahead and give this a new color. We want some blue going on. So let's do 0, 0, and 1. Drag this up here so we can save our color. And OK. And we'll just drag that out of the way so it's neat and clean and organized isn't that awesome compile and save so now we need to find our range so let's look at this mile and a half long section for shooting that I didn't create by the way this is not my spaghetti alright so there's actually a weapon range variable right there and it's being used in here weapon range and it's being plugged into right there so that weapon range variable is set to 5,000 I'm gonna set that puppy to 10,000 I like them apples now and here's the thing though is we could actually we could mess with that variable and in our scope stuff we can make that even more of a thing so when we're, we set our crosshair on, let's go ahead and grab our weapon range, and we want to set weapon range, and let's copy that and paste that, so when we use our scope. So we can have one range set up when we're using our crosshair, and one when we're using our scope. So we're in scope mode, or crosshair mode, um, we want our view range to be our original 5,000. But now, when we're in our sniper mode, we set it to 10,000. So, how about them apples? We can play. Now, if we're in this mode, we can shoot this guy. That guy is probably out of our range. We can't hit him because we're in this mode. But we hit that sniper mode, and uh, we can tag that ass for sure now. Oh, you a sneaky one. So let's get some elevations. Let's go upstairs here. We need a flashlight. Because these buildings get a little dark. We need a flashlight on our weapon. So I'm just going to go upstairs and peek out the window and be a sniper. What you say? Shut up and go ahead and add a flashlight? Okay. Um, how are we going to add a flashlight? That's our scope stuff. So, 
Let's make a flashlight. Why not? Okay. We got all this lovely stuff. And honestly, you know, we can, if this is too ugly, we can come down here and so we have it selected. We could actually change its scale. It's not going to affect anything on how it works, but we're going to make it smaller just so it's not. You can see, doesn't change anything. So while we're in our this mode, we want a flashlight. So let's add a flashlight to our weapon, and I think I just want to go ahead and add it to my weapon itself. Um, do 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 do. We have our FP gun. I'm going to select that and I'm going to add a component and I'm going to scroll down or move around. I want... No, I don't want a point light. I want a spotlight. Okay, so first off we see it's pointing in the wrong direction. We're going to change the name of it. We're going to call this our weapon light. Let's grab our rotation transform and I'm going to undo because I didn't have it checked. Excuse me, why the hell are you locking up? Ugh. So rotate it 90 degrees. We want it to come out from the weapon itself. So let's move our light forward. Excuse me. Move our light forward, thank you. And let's actually screw it, let's put it in the barrel. Why? Just because. Um, first off, stop moving, shit. Real time, off. And I'm going to uncheck snapping now so I can actually get it where I want it. And we're going to get it just outside the the muzzle itself just so we know we're good. <sighs> Let's see. That cone angle, a bit much. Let's lower that cone angle down. And let's turn up the attenuation radius to make it a little bit longer and let's turn up the intensity that should be good for a good weapon flashlight with good range to it and everything else so let's compost and save but we've got a visible hidden and non hidden gain we want um, auto activate to not be true so is there an auto activate on here and I don't see one our light's pure white. We can change it to blue color or yellow or red or green or whatever, but that's not really that important right now. Um, it's visible, not hidden in game, and there is no way to, to directly turn it off. So let's go to our event graph. And on event begin play, I'm going to make a little bit of room here. I'm going to grab reference from my spotlight and I want to try doing this. Set visibility. So set visibility and I'm not going to check anything. So, well first off let's uncheck that. So we hit compile and save. Let's go into the game and we'll play now. And we see we got a flashlight. It's on. And we could use it to pan around wherever we aim. Now it's coming right from our weapon, so we're we're getting that view. So now we can see, we can check things out. We can't turn it on or off right now, but you know, at least we have a flashlight. We can we can use it. So let's actually see if it now works if we set visibility to false on event begin play, and we don't have a flashlight. Oh no that broke it so that's good we want it to stop working so now we can do this we can come over here and 
Let's find us a clear spot to work with. And I am going to do keyboard F. F is for flashlight. That's what we're going to use. So when we hit the F key, we're going to get a reference to our spotlight. And we're going to do the flip-flop again. Because flip-flops are not just stylish footwear. So flip-flop. And now we're going to go ahead and do set visibility again. Connect that to A. And I'm going to Control C and Control V. Then I'm going to check right there, new visibility to checked. And then on B, connect this and leave it unchecked. So now when we hit the F key, oh, excuse me. Sorry, let's connect the spotlight to the target. And let's rename it again because I already renamed it once. Flash, or no. We called it our Weepin Light. Compost, save, and it changed it everywhere we needed it to change. So now if we go in here and play, our light's off. We hit F, our light comes on. So now we've got a weapon light. So now we can pretend we're special. We got a flashlight. We can turn on and off so as it gets dark. Boom. We can turn the light on or off. Easy as pie. It's kind of helpful. It's really dark in here. And having a flashlight allows us to see where we're going. Now we can change the cone angle and make it to where it's wider and maybe a different color or whatever, you know. But it's nice now we have a weapon light and we can turn on and off as we need to. We have a working sniper mode and. I can see you, but you're out of range for normal shooting. Well, maybe not. Um, you should be out of range. We can't hit you with, with this crosshair, but let's zoom in. And now we can shoot your ass, because we're a sniper. Sniper mode engaged. Flashlight on, off, doesn't matter, because it's not going to project that far anyway. Use that to get on target with, and there we go. Our bots have death animations, they despawn, it works. Use our regular crosshair to get us on target quick. Zoom in, put the smack down, and haul ass. Oh, yeah, that'll work. Great, but well, this sound effect for this gun is a little bit on the wimpy side. Don't really care for that gunshot sound. Um, I should have these gunshot sounds also available. So I'm going to go to my asset folder, effects, and look inside here. And I am going to grab a different sound for the rifle. So that one just sounds a little bit on the weenie side. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah, we're not on the pew, pew mode. We want, we want um, some real gunshots. So... Um, I have a riffle gunshot. Grab that. And that's good. You know, I could bring in the, the snipper sound. Or a rifle. Well, I also got shotgun, and I also got, uh, 9mm, might as well bring all of them in here and compare all four. So 9mm, I like that one. Um, that rifle sounds better than the other rifle sound. Eh. Let's stick with rifle for right now. So that's the only one that I really wanted to bring in here. So I'm going to I'm going to delete all of them except for the 9mm. And I'm going to save all so I can get them saved. And then I'm going to do something else here. I'm going to create a sound attenuation. Go to sounds, sound attenuation. And we're going to call this gunshot. And a gunshot, let's change that to the inner radius. Let's make sure it's 800. And let's go with 4,000. You want to be able to hear that gunshot from a little ways out. 
probably come back in and change that later also, but that's going to be our our actual gunshot sound. Now, our gunshot sound radius. And then I'm going to take this rifle and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to create a queue. And then I'm going to go into that queue and we don't need this to loop, so that's fine. And then from our output node here, we want to go ahead and attenuation settings and select our new sound attenuation of gunshot and save that. Now on our player base, well, first off, this is view related, so let's comment this. Um, flash light and give it a color of blue and shove them up there. Compost and save. Now let's go up to all this shooting stuff here. It's playing montage, playing sound at location right here. Let's change that to um, where are you? Rifle Q. Now we compost and save, go back into our game and play. So now we got a new sound, we got a particle emitter, we got a new system for doing the crosshair. That crosshair is a little bit small, but you know what? It works. The um, scope mode works. Our range is set to where we can shoot okay when we're in this mode, but we're limited on range. And that's a little bit too far for our range on this mode. I can't hit that guy, so let's zoom in, and now we can hit him. So let's actually turn down the range on the pistol a little bit more. Um, or Not really a pistol, but in, in that mode. So our scope and crosshair, when we're using our crosshair, let's change our weapon range to... 3,000. We don't want to be trying to snipe with uh, our rifle in that, that short mode, but when we, we put our scope on, we definitely want to have that longer range to it. So now that should decrease the amount of range. Shoot those boxes, get them out of the way. So now we can't hit that guy. This guy we should be able to hit. Yep. But to hit this guy over here, we're going to have to zoom in and then use our scope mode, and that works perfectly. And of course, you know, we got our bots, they're going to chase after us. Hey, how you doing? And he's got a weapon in his hand. So they're using their, their follow. We'll run out here. Yes, ignore my, my stupid there. But as long as we stay within his cone of radius. These guys are going to follow us. Here soon we'll set them up to where they actually aim at us and shoot at us. But for now, that's just going to get us going with um, what I promised in this one, having a sniper mode. We changed the gunshot sound. We changed the way it processes the crosshair. So, not bad for one afternoon of just a couple little short videos. We've gone from creating a modular building system, although it looks like crap, but whatever. Um, we can shoot. we got particle effects whenever our bullets hit. So, not bad overall. You guys, let me know what you want to see next on this. And, um, it, like I said, at some point, I will probably go ahead and bring in multiplayer, but for now... This is going to be just single player. We've got basic bot system. Um, here soon we'll get the bots actually being able to shoot at us. Whenever they get to a certain range, they start pursuing us. They might actually start opening fire. Since video is a little bit on the short side, like I said, I try to keep these no more than an hour. But it's not that I have to make them an hour long. We finished what we needed to finish a little bit early. That's why we started doing some other things to it. Um, our characters, um, currently right now our bot is actually using uh, the standard white color. Let's go ahead and make these guys a different color because now they're an enemies. So they're using the standard third person uh, character, 
But what I want to do is I want to go back to my textures and my... Hmm, I don't have a materials folder, so let's go ahead and create a materials folder. So, let's go ahead and look in the uh, mannequin folder. And in the character folders there, and we've got mesh, but all I want is the materials that are here. These two, UEM underscore UE4 man body and chest logo. So I'm going to grab those two, and I'm going to drag them into my materials folder, and I'm going to copy here. And now I'm going to change them, and I'm going to say that this is, I'm trying not to sneeze here, M underscore red underscore body. And we're going to change this one to M underscore red logo. So, there's a couple things we can do is, and let's make it cool since we've got 15 minutes left. These guys are white. So let's go into a red logo, and we want to click on body color right here, then click here. Let's grab our red color, and now that red that it was using also had a transparency. So I'm going to do 0.5 to match, or actually 1, I won't do it, so I need to go to 0, so that we have transparency also. So it matches what they had before, and let's hit save, and close that, and we want to go into our, let's close our player base for right now, red underscore body, and we just want to right click and scroll until we get to body color, and then we can click here for our default value. I'm going to click here, but I'm also going to change that also to zero, so we're using the exact same that we're using with the other one. Click OK, and we want to click Apply and Save. You can just click Save, it'll apply it also, but let's let it do its thing here. Now, this is cool. We can actually change this color, but we're going to do it in a different way. We can leave them white as they are, but how about if they see us, they turn red. So, event any damage, death, on C pawn. Okay, so on C pawn, the first thing we want them to do is when they see us, we want them to go into to danger mode. So we can do a couple things, and off of event, um, or off the uh, the on C pawn, we can make their entire character turn red, or we can just make the chess logo turn red so that they're in aggro mode and chasing after us. But let's keep it simple for right now. Whenever we are on the way, um, on move finish. Well, let's just work off of this, and what we want to do is get a reference to the mesh. And it's going to drop this right here. And we want to set material. Connect that in here. So when they see us, what we want them to do, I'm just going to drag this underneath here. So it's a little bit neater to work with. And at this point, we want element. Hmm. So we're probably going to need two of these. So let's Control C and Control V. The reason why we need two is they have two materials on there. So we want element index one and two. Because if you look at your mesh, element zero is the body, element one is the chest logo. So we want to do both. So let's do zero and one. Connect mesh to here. And on this one, we want, since element one is the body, we want our red body. Well, this we want our red logo. So on C pawn, let's do that and be goofy. Control C, Control V. Well, maybe not so much goofy, but arm request failed. We'll set it back to um,
Uh, let's see. That's the right one. Since we have three in here, I want to get the correct one off the game mannequin character materials. And the same thing here. Was it chest? Yeah. UE4 mannequin chest logo. Okay, that's it there. So in theory, um, oh, please let me connect to you. Because what else are you going to be setting your material to if I don't tell you that you're going to the mesh? So, Home Cheese is good. He's white. Dead. So, come over here, and if this guy sees us, oh crap, he turned red. So, he's angry at us. And then, what we want to do is try to make him fail. And if we could make him fail, he will actually turn back to white. So, that's it. So as long as they don't know we're here and they're not coming after us, then they're going to stay white. Um, another thing that I would probably end up doing here also is on our bot base, we have on C pawn. But, mm, that's pawn sensing is seeing sight and sound. Hmm. On C pawn. Well, what if we did. Um, Invent on here noise and did the same thing. Control C, Control V. So if we hear a noise, instigator of our player character. If our player makes a noise, which to me, gunshot seems like it's a noise. Um, so, location and volume. I've actually never used this before, so it may not work. It may fail gloriously. Um, sight radius and hearing threshold. Um, Location on here, noise. Location. In volume. Hmm. So that's probably not going to work, but we need to. When we shoot. Shooting, it's lovely, and all this stuff here. Um, add a component. And... Pawn Noise Emitter. No, we don't want that. Not what we want. Um, so let's try to... Noise. Make noise. Pawn make noise. Inform AI controllers that you've made a noise they might hear. They are sent a hear noise message. And yeah. So that's what we want is... We could set the loudness. And the range is from 0 to 1. So gunshot's going to be 1. Target is, well, our gun. Noise location. If zero vector, use the actor's location. Okay, that's good. That If it's left zero, then it'll use our location. Um, so I don't actually have to manually set that. Use noise maker location. Noise maker. Which actor? So, okay, well, let's... um. Try plugging this sucker in, see what happens. And if you don't get it to work, then I'll just rip it back out and do something else later. So let's drag that in here and connect that to here and this to here. So we continue on with that sequence. And target is already set to self, pawn um, reference, 
loudness um, just to be on the safe side um, let's actually get a reference to the yeah why not let's grab the gun and get world location and just go ahead and plug that in who knows it might work it might not it's one of those things where try things if it works great if it doesn't well either he's deaf or he just doesn't hear it so hey schmuck boy okay well it doesn't work but whatever um but this does work whenever he does see us he turns to angry mode yay and there was much rejoicing so yeah didn't figure it was going to work on my first try but you know what try things and that's all part of learning is why not try things I'll revisit this at some other point later um, on here noise like I said I've never used it before so I'll try it again later it's not vital but I think that it's a good component to use so when you fire a gunshot they should hear you and like oh there's a gunshot we need to go investigate what happened there so if we change our, our character to red whenever they saw us they're angry um, we could actually change their material again and what we've done here is these two are back to the white um, let's actually grab this so when they're dead let's just do one more thing here when they die let's have them change to another color let's turn them black that sounds good compile and save we'll come back to this um, because we need to create the material first go to our materials grab these two and duplicate and I'm going to change this one from red body to black body and this one right here our other one let's change that from red logo to black logo again super complicated to do Oh, gee, click here. Black. Okay. Save. Close. <laughs> it's complicated. It really is. Um, black body. Scroll to here. Go to here. Here. And drag it all the way down to here. And okay save finish compiling your shaders there monkey boy come on you can do it we got two minutes left hurry up you schmuck thank you so now we can come back in here type in black body and black logo compost save so now when they die they turn into their their body turns black and this will finish out the video so if they don't see us they stay white and they're dead oh I have it too close to the um, Yes, yes, shut up. I get it. Because I've already destroyed the actor. Idiot. Um, let's actually move that to here. As soon as I hit play, I knew exactly what the hell I did. And knew better. You know what? get out of here we don't want you go to there because <laughs> it destroyed the actor and then turned them black what the hell good is it to turn them black if they're already dead 
and been destroyed and removed from the freaking map. So as soon as they die, we're going to turn them black, and then they're going to do their death animation and all that fancy stuff, and then destroy Ector will happen. Okay. I got it. I made a mistake. There we go. And done. Sniper mode. And dead. So, everything that I said in the title, and then some. We have adjusted the weapon range, so if we're just sitting here doing this. Why was it shooting the ground as I was doing that? Why is it hitting the ground there when I'm running? That is so stupid. Okay, so. Too far away. We can't hit them, so we have to zoom in. Now we can hit them. So when we kill them, they turn black. When they see us, they turn red. And. Dead. Turn back red again. So, okay. He's still angry at me, so I guess that works. Him died angry. No worries. But everything else is working. That's great. That's lovely. Alright guys. Thank you everybody for watching. And we will see you in the next one.